narrow one, just dragging branches all down the side of the van. We're back exploring the back entry here and uh, trying to find a nice little spot to kind of make some coffee here this morning. So this road, when I came up here, branched three different directions. Let's go check out where the rest of them go. Ooh, a little bumpy here. That's the ocean out there, from up here on the mountain. I'll listen to those frogs. Come on, Krizzy. Amazing. But it's so cool that I'm up here on the mountainside and the ocean is like right there. You can see some of the Gulf Islands. My phone doesn't zoom in very well, but there's some Gulf Islands in the middle and then you can see more open ocean on the other side before it hits the mainland over there. Put those frogs out here. I don't, is, is frogs a seasonal thing? Because I... I don't remember the last time I was out this way hearing this many frogs. Seems like every time we're out in the backcountry these days, those frogs are going nuts. It's just about time to put that, put that winter blanket away. Brought us some food for Cruzy, including uh, a couple of quail eggs. Gonna thaw out a herring, and he's got a lamb dinner. But he likes these little quail eggs. Since we're redoing the floor of my van pretty soon, that means this will have to come out. We're pulling part of that cabinet apart. And that's always scary sometimes because then you get to see what's been lurking underneath this bowl because these bowls are actually screwed right to the floor. So who knows what kind of stuff is like underneath these edges. But I think when the new floor goes in, because it'll be a hard floor, not soft like this one, like a standard house floor, I may run a bead of clear caulking around here just to seal the bottom off. So I don't got to worry about any kind of like bacteria and stuff growing around Cruz's food bowl. I try my hardest to get in the edges here, but you know, I don't think it really works. As time goes on, things in the van continually break. So there's four holes there. These were screwed into two of them before and then I shifted again and re-drilled re them into there. But I think maybe it's time to change this bracket and weld something directly to the van itself. That way I don't have this problem anymore. The backcountry just rocks these out and there really isn't much you can do about it. They take a bit of a butt kicking. But I do have an appointment at J5 Custom Vans coming up in April here. So um, what we're doing there is remaking this cabinet. So this is the cabinet that J5 Custom Vans very first built in my van. That was the, P, the first piece of like proper build that went in here. I used to have just home furnishing cabinets at the time. And then he ended up building this one for me. So it's it's been in my van now for four years and uh, it's just come time to rework the bottom side of it. The bottom of this has taken on a bit of water, so it's starting to split and stuff. But uh, we're putting in a new floor. And the new floor is going to raise things up a bit. So these jugs won't fit there anymore because they'll be higher, which means this cabinet has to be lifted up a little bit. So maybe this shelf will be 
up here somewhere. So at that time, while we're there anyway, we'll probably rework this bracket scenario here because this whole cabinet's getting redone. And then maybe we'll weld something onto there, something a little bit more permanent. It's done me well though. Believe it or not, that bracket has only fallen out a couple of times in four years. Pretty good for a couple of little screws. So for now, we're just gonna throw a screw in here and hopefully that's There we go. I love having this little fold down counter right here. It makes a great outdoor kitchen. Uh, let's, before this frying pan gets hot, let's make some hash browns. Seriously, this little kitchen area is awesome. Comes in super handy. And I have it adjusted in here where there's two screws. So you can see there's two of them. So if I need this table up a tiny bit higher, I simply just put this behind the second screw. Okay, we won't fuss with this while it's there. You see what I mean? It's got the two screws there. You just wind the cable over the other one if you wanna bring this up or take it off the top one if you wanna bring it down lower. I did it like that so if I'm parked at a weird angle, I can adjust the height of that counter so my burner and stuff doesn't go whoop right off of it. But discussing this, I think it's time to make a video on my channel that I've never made. And that's what would I do different if I rebuilt this van again? Like if I had to go back, what would I do different? I've never made a video like that on my channel going, top five mistakes I made building my van or top whatever, or the worst things we ever did in the van build. I have never once produced a video like that here. So let's talk about some things on my van that I may change the next round and some of the things that I learned along the way putting this van together slowly over the last four and a half years. The first thing I would change would be the van itself. This is the Ford E250 with a payload capacity of 8,600 pounds. If I would have purchased the E350, it would have given me 9,600 pounds of payload capacity, meaning that right now in the current state of my van with everything that's in it fully fueled up with me, the dog, and stock full of food and beer and everything, I'm right up pretty close to my maximum allowable on this van. But if it was a 350, we'd still have an extra thousand pounds or more of payload capacity. It makes that much of a difference. That, and I would also have purchased one with a larger engine. I didn't know I was gonna turn my van into this. I have the 4.6 liter gasoline engine in here. If I had the 5.4 liter, it'd have a bit more power. If I had the V10, it'd have way more power. But the Econoline series of vans, they have all sorts of different engines um, across the years. I know if I were to do one right now, it would probably be the E350 with the V10 engine in one of the last years that they made the Econolines, which I think was like 2014 or something like that. But yeah, first thing would have been is to buy the bigger engine and the one with the biggest payload capacity. Just something to keep in mind because you never know where your van life's gonna go. I started my van life as a city boy, and now this is where I feel the most comfortable. Way out here. We're burning my breakfast. Too much talking, not enough watching my breakfast. Another thing I would definitely do different would have been my floor. When I first moved into my van, money was a major factor. I was drowning in so much debt and I was barely having a hard time getting by, let alone renovate a van at the same time. So I went super simple. I bought underneath this floor is a uh, rubber floor or a foam and rubber floor um, called Van Tread or, or Bed Rug by Van Tread or something like that. I put that down on the bottom because it may, it came in a custom cut piece and it just dropped right in. I had that as my floor for the longest time, but it had such a gritty top on and it was tearing my knees apart. So then I went to Home Depot and I glued down some of this roll-on roll-on flooring. 
And as you can tell, so underneath there is the floor that I put in initially. That's the original floor and I just threw this one over top. But the problem with having a soft floor is if you're kneeling here, you can tell there's a large bump here. And all that bump is, is over the years, me kneeling on the floor, pushing this way, I've pushed it up into a bit of a bump and it's causing stress tears all throughout here. So if I were to redo my van, I would definitely lay down a plywood floor, maybe insulate underneath because there's no insulation underneath mine. It's just literally metal, foam, the roll on top and that's it. I would have definitely thrown a small layer of insulation underneath, maybe a half inch layer threw a sheet of plywood over top and laid down a proper um, like vinyl plank flooring. Something that's repairable, something I can take out if it gets damaged. Definitely the floor. A little tip though, I heard this from somebody and, and I wouldn't have thought about this. Ray Outfitted actually told me this. If you lay the floor down in your van, don't lay an entire floor out. Put your cabinets over top of it because you then you can't repair it. So you put the cabinets in and lay your floor on this side of it so if you need to replace a plank you can still get access to popping the plank out to fix it because if you lay that that snap together flooring underneath those cabinets then you're gonna have a hard time repairing them when you need to pull one board out because in van life things happen and it's pretty easy when you build your van to get caught up with the excitement of just getting it all done and and put together but little repairability things like that you need to keep mindful of yeah, I wish I had a different floor. Something I did do right though, took me years to figure it out, was to utilize the space inside of your doors. So your door has about this much space there. Most people put the front on there and put a box on the front side of it, where we actually cut a hole in the door and used the depth of this cavity. It may not seem like much, but that's how deep the door is there. If I put my hand inside, it goes all the way back, back to my wrist where up here goes to like my first set of knuckles. So you're gaining double the space by utilizing the inside of these. I gotta throw some positive stuff up in there somewhere, but yeah. So before I just put panels on the front, just like everybody else, but utilizing the additional storage space on your doors is so vital. Oh, on that note, barn doors on the side of your van are super valuable because if you have a sliding door, you can't do anything with the inside of my door panels. And if you take a look at my panels, they have a lot of stuff on it from everything that's stored inside of here, paper towel holders, my flashlight. On this side has my garbage can, another cabinet that goes all the way back the depth of the entire door, my bear spray. None of these things you could put on a sliding door because the door slides right down the side of the van meaning you really can't do a lot with this. You might be able to utilize, like here on the bottom, we put a little cubby box on the bottom to put Cruzy's toys and stuff like that. You could do this stuff, but utilizing this box space and stuff like that is so vital. So a big suggestion is if you can source a van with barn doors, I think that's the better way to go. I really like having drawers. Drawers are awesome, but the simple little ones are no problem. They latch shut easy peasy. I think what I would do though, is I would not do a large drawer like that because it's big, it's heavy. And the problem with a big heavy one with a latch on it is if it gets too much bounce in the back country and it pops off the inside latch because it does happen because there's a lot of stuff in there, this drawer comes flying out. We have a little system in there which keeps this from coming all the way out. You'll see a little back little clip right there. That keeps the drawer from ever coming all the way out. As you can tell, a lot of these little things that I would change are not big deals. They're not big elaborate things that I made mistakes on. Just things I think I would do better on the next one. And for me sharing this stuff with you guys, hopefully when you guys are planning your van builds, you can kind of be mindful of some of the things that, you know, maybe I wish I would have done different. Like doing big drawers like some people just wouldn't think that well let's do one long one there i find the bigger drawers are the ones that give you the biggest problems would i have put my fridge on the inside heck no 
I enjoy having my fridge freezer here in the back. It's no big deal for me to come over here, get some back access, opening it up. Right now, my bigger side is a freezer, the smaller side is a fridge. Sometimes I do freezer, freezer, depending on what I'm doing at that time of year, or I may do large fridge, small freezer. But now the cruise is on raw food, he gets the bigger half, obviously. Because I sometimes when you're traveling, I don't know where the next pet store is that I'm going to be able to stock up on some quality raw food. So sometimes it's nice to just pack her full and be good to go. That way my little puppy bear there uh, has lots of food. But I think I would be a little bit more mindful when building the van on the payload capacity of my van itself. But being mindful of what you put in there for build stuff because it all adds weight. There are some things in my van that are pretty light, but when you start getting into doing doing big solid cabinets and stuff like that, things can get heavy. Andy at Overland Interiors does this little honeycomb stuff on the inside of all, like inside of my whole bed platform would have been really heavy if he didn't cut out the honeycomb pattern. It is awesome. It reduces like half the weight or three quarters of the weight of some of those boards and still yet keeps the structure. But little things you can do when you're building your van, always remember every single cabinet you make or every little thing you try to, to put in there, be mindful on how can you make that thing, even if it's one pound lighter, by the time you get to the end of your build, you could have shaved off 50 extra pounds. May seem like nothing, but trust me, when your vehicle starts to get heavy, every 50 pounds makes a monster difference. So you'll notice inside of my cabinet here, like I can put my fingers all the way through it. Overland Interiors puts these little honeycombs in there to reduce the weight and also allow airflow. As for my actual van build in here, there's not much I would change. Everything is where it needs to be, it's functional. I had time to methodically think this thing out over years of living in my van with with barely anything in it or keeping things super simple with like plastic cabinets and straps at the beginning or using home furnishings for a while. Like I was in this thing for an entire year just about before I put walls up. Even after that, I could still see my, my foil on my insulation on my roof. But keeping it simple allowed me to build the ultimate home for me. And I know you guys watching my videos or another YouTube channel's videos, if you copy them, that van build may be the worst thing you ever slept in because it may work for them. It might not be at all functional for you. That's why I always suggest live in your van, bare bones and basic, whether you're building an overland rig or you're going in it full time or you're building out something to bomb around on the weekends with, spend some time in your van when it's empty before you build it. 100% the best advice you'll ever get, trust me. Your build at the end of it will be more functional, things will be in the smarter places, and you'll probably end up saving money because you'll do things that a lot of people do. They'll install a sink in their van and realize that they don't use a sink. So let's talk about that real quick too. Do I regret not putting in a legitimate proper bathroom in here with a uh, nature's head thing that vents out the side. Absolutely not. My pail and bucket works. Do I wish I would have put in permanent water tanks in my van so I could have more water capacity? That is a definite no. I love having these little jugs. Absolutely love them. Why? Because I can take them in anywhere and get them filled. I don't have to rely on finding somewhere with a hose because that sometimes in a van is a big pain in the butt. Having jugs you can take in with you, 100% exactly what I would do again, big time. Even in the ambulance, the same thing. I will always maintain movable jugs because I live in my van full time and I know the simplicity it is to walk into any major big store, even a Walmart, and fill my jugs up there at their water fill up stations. Wouldn't change that and I definitely would not be adding a sink. But I did notice I've been talking a lot about vehicle weight. And I never thought about the vehicle weight when I was building it out. I never thought about any of that stuff. Because I remember being at Overland Interiors and Andy was talking about stuff. I'm like, I don't care, dude. I don't care, dude. I never cared. I never cared until it became a problem. And it became a problem when my van started to feel a little bit sluggish. And that comes down to having the smaller 4.6 liter engine though. If I had the bigger engine, we'd be good to go. But I never thought about those things because if it's not a problem, your van's got lots of power, you don't think about it. 
And it wasn't until things started to feel heavy and I started to put my van through more challenging things like being out here in the backcountry, going up slippery terrain or up a steeper, a steeper hill and I noticed my van is losing power. That's where I wish my van was a couple thousand pounds lighter on what I had on it, just to make those scenarios a little bit more powerful. But if you really look at that, at the end of that day, it comes down to me should have choosing, me should have? That would have come down to me choosing the Ford E350 with a bigger engine that would solve all of those problems. But those are things, guys, I think you should really just keep in mind. Uh, we could walk over my van build and talk about every little tiny detail of it, and maybe one day we will. But those are just some things right now while I was cleaning my van that were on my mind about things that I probably would have changed. Let's cover a few things that I love about my van. I love this pull-out drawer. I love this drawer because I can access things that would have normally been under my van, which means pulling out multiple sets of boxes all spread out across the ground here just to access, you know, some extra wet wipes and my little fold-up table, or, you know, I need to pull out bins just to get to my recovery gear and stuff like that. Not only does this drawer make it easier to get access to your stored items underneath your bed, it becomes a very functional space to lean, stand, and socialize with other people that are around your vehicle. I quite often use this thing as an editing station, a place to entertain friends. You've seen in videos recently where me and Emmy pulled this out in a parking lot at a grocery store, and we use this as a, as a kitchen table where we made dinner and uh, sat there and had a, had a great lunch. Having a pull-out drawer system is amazing because no matter what you do in a space this small, countertop space is something you will always have a challenge with. I don't care how big your van is. Look how much more counter space this thing has provided me. Unbelievable amount of room to work. So I had a problem with my fridge once. I pulled the fridge out, stuck it on top of here. I had a huge workspace. So this has become storage, a great place to sit because it has a 400 pound weight capacity on it, a kitchen, a dining table, and a workbench. Super, oh, and, a, and an entertaining area for all your friends. Super, super good idea in your vans to get some kind of a pull-out drawer system because hey, who doesn't like a little bit more counter space or workspace? Is there anything else you'd like to add to this video? Anything you'd like to change? Besides having your treat cupboard open at all times so you could eat it? Anything else? No, you're good. It's been a while on this channel since I've talked to you guys about my van, about my build and, and things that are attached to it. Because we get caught up so much lately in, in the shop and adventuring and just driving around the backcountry and just having a good time that sometimes I forget on this channel, it's nice to touch base on my van home because I know there's a lot of new people around here that haven't really gotten a good look at my vehicle. Maybe after my floors and stuff are done and sometime on my road trip this summer, I will do a fully updated van tour because my last van tour of my van on my channel, it didn't have the lift kit. It didn't have that fancy polyurethane coating or anything. My van has changed a lot since my last van tour. I think the last van tour I had, I just started with a, uh, a roof rack system. I think I only had a couple of bars up there and I think I had two different styles of roof racks on there at the time. So uh, my home has definitely changed a lot. So maybe we'll touch on that sometime coming up on my summer travels here. But hopefully some of you guys found this video interesting. I know my long-term subscribers are like, we already know all this stuff, Chrome. I know, but there's more than just you here. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be positive and stay weird and uh, share some love with everybody, okay? All right, see you in the next one.